Hey, 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 welcome back, peeps. Here we are with our three degree of freedom motion platform, how to build. We're here to talk about all the fasteners we're gonna to need to keep our sim together when we are racing like people possessed down Norschleifer and we don't want our uh, sim rig to you know, fly apart with us on it. We need fasteners, let's talk about them. Rightio, I'm gonna go by my list again so I don't get too sidetracked. You are going to need uh, some 20 millimeter, some 35 millimeter, and some 65 millimeter, 12 gauge, 12G hex head metal screws. They are a self-tapping screw. That's these guys here. <clears throat> you can get them in packs of 50. Okay, and I'm using them to uh, fasten, to you know, attach my seat to my top frame. I'm using them to attach my steering frame on this side at least, because mine's a bit of a a mongrel setup, yours will be slightly different, but you will still use tech screws. So I'm using tech screws to uh, attach a lot of peripherals to my metal. And I'm doing it that way because they're a lot faster than drilling because they drill at the same time and then they fasten. You can use bolts if you want to, but it's gonna be a lot more work, but these are more than functional the way they work. And I like the industrial look. You will need those, you need a 5 16th or an eight millimeter hex socket driver, but we'll talk about that when we talk about tools. You're gonna to need uh, three door furniture screws and you're going to need M4 by 0.7 pitch thread. That's these guys. Right, so they're a door furniture screw. They're very readily available all over the shop. You can get them from Bunnings. I uh, don't know, you must be able to get them in Walmart. They are for our motor shafts, right? They go in the ends of our motor shaft here. So then we can attach our pentometers to our motor shaft. Now, these particular motors, I'm assuming you're gonna buy these same motors, you're gonna source these. When you get them, the great thing about those is, and I didn't even know that until I purchased them, it was a bonus, they already have a hole drilled in the center of the shaft. The problem is it's not really a big enough hole to uh, run a decent screw. So you do need to drill it a little bit and you need to tap it. So then you've got a thread. Once again, this is something I had lying around and it was almost the right size for the hole already in the shaft. So it's an easy drill. The shaft is already drilled, as I said, so it's centered. Everything's already there. You've just got to drill it and tap it, which we'll talk about when we come to the build. Please get, so then you're on the same page as I am, three M4 by 0.7 pitch thread door furniture screws. Conical spaces we sort of touched on in the materials build. Okay, you can see one in action on that one there, sort of at the bottom. And as I say, they just, they give space for your tie rod to really get its full range of movement. These guys here, okay. These are M6 with a one millimeter pitch thread and they're 30 millimeters long. Now, and, and there's, and you'll need four of these. These relate to if you're using a G27 or G29 Logitech steering wheel or the G29 or G27 shifters, okay? They're the screws, those two guys there, that will fit your steering wheel and shifter to screw them on to your shifter bracket and onto your steering wheel plate. So if you're not using Logitech, that may not apply to you. You'll have to improvise and you'll have to work it out. I can help you with it if you need to ask me. It's gonna be the same principle, exactly the same principle of what we'll be doing with these when we build these, but your locations for your screws and your screw sizes may be different if you're using Fanatec or Thrush, <laughs> Thrust Master steering wheels but i've included that for those using the dodgy uh, logitech gear okay and you'll need six of the same size m6 one millimeter thread pitch and you'll need six at 20 millimeters long that shorter guy there for your logitech pedal board that's them there okay so they're shorter you don't have the long ones or you'll bottom out in your pedal board so they've got to be 20 millimeters in length you're going to need uh m12 by 1.75 pitch thread, okay, by 60 millimeters in length, bolts, these guys here. 60 millimeters in length, 1.75 pitch thread, M12 in diameter, bolt. They are for all of your tie rod connections on all points of our build. Our traction loss motors and 
Our front motors are all held on with those bolts. You will need with them a Nylex nut. Get a Nylex nut. So a Nylex nut is a nut that has a nylon insert. So in other words, when this screws on, that nylon's smaller than the actual diameter of the nut, so it bites onto the thread and the nut won't come loose. Now, here's a little trick. Notice how those these particular Nylex nuts are, are tapered. They've got a tapered top. So once you've screwed them on the way they go on and they've burnt uh, a thread into that nylon, you can then turn them upside down when you go to install them and create a conical spacer from the uh, nut itself. It does provide more clearance than if it was going flat to the thread and it can be used as conical spacer. Talking about the tie rods, this happens to be a male tie rod because it uh, has come later. Um, what happened was I ordered these on eBay and it's very hard to get these for some reason. There's a bit of a shortage of these guys. So, you know, good old eBay, of course, you order them and then you get the message, oh, these are, um, you know, going to take a long time to come. Well, you know, me being the patient man, I wasn't going to wait 600 years. So I ended up going to a local bearing shop who also happened to sell tie rod ends. And I ended up buying my tie rod ends from the bearing shop. And really, I wanted female, not male to begin with. So I've got these male ones now, and that's fine because I'm going to make another motion sim and I'll use them on the next motion sim. I recommend you get... Uh, female and you are going to need m12 with a 1.75 pitch thread female thread and the bore you want an m12 bore and you want an m12 1.75 pitch female thread you will also need six regular m12 1.75 millimeter pitch nuts because they will be on every point of fastening from your tie rods to lock your tie rods. Six M12 1.75 millimeter pitch nuts. You will need four 90 degree brackets for your seat to frame attachment. These are 75 millimeters by 75 millimeters. Okay, get two millimeter gauge thick 75 by 75 millimeter 90 degree brackets for your seat. Now. You have to understand that I don't know what seat you've got. This works with this track racing seat, okay? You may have different connection points. Your connection points might be on the bottom of your seat. If they are, don't panic. If you already have a seat, I'm sure we'll be able to work this out together uh, via the comments, um, how you can attach that basically to your to your 25 by 25 box. You'll probably have to locate your 25 by 25 millimeter box in slightly location, slightly different locations on the frame to line up with where your attachment points are on your seat. We can work that out. That's just a matter of using a tape measure. M12 by 1.75 millimeter pitch threaded rod, two meters. Okay, this is this guy, right? This is our threaded rod for all of our uh, tie rod to motor connectors. M12 gauge 1.75 millimeter pitch thread so that it matches your 1.75 millimeter female thread inside okay you need two meters of that to cover our traction loss connection and to cover our front motor connection two meters you'll have a little bit left over you'll need one swivel caster one that swivels okay you won't even be using the wheel but get 75 millimeter as well so then it's a 75 millimeter frame you're going to remove the wheel from that, and that's what becomes your pivot point for your mid-frame. So then your traction loss can pivot. Okay, you're going to need a tractor or a vehicle drive shaft uni joint. My sim rig has this big Cat 3 tractor uni joint from a PDO shaft. It's by nature a very large uni joint, very tall, which actually works out really well because it gives good separation from our top frame to our mid-frame. Okay, which gives us fantastic travel for our pitch and roll axis. I have access to some farm equipment, so I was able to uh, pilfer that from a damaged PDO shaft that was bent and salvaged the uni joint. And that's what we use here. But don't panic. You just need to go to a wreckers, so you'll need a rear wheel drive vehicle. A lot of the mid 90s Fords here in Australia still use the tail shaft. Uh, we'll cut that uni joint out and then we'll block it and pack it to be the same dimensions as our mid-frame 
to our top frame. Same with you, my American friends, or from anywhere around the world, you need to find a rear wheel drive tail shaft. It's the best one to go with. We'll just work it out. It's just a matter of measuring and adding some material to get the height. You'll need uh, two 90 degree brackets for your pentometer placement on your front motors, okay? And please get 75 millimeter by 75 millimeter and get two millimeter thick so it's rigid, 90 degree brackets. Don't worry about the hole placement because we'll probably have to drill the holes to line up correctly with our uh, center of our shaft. So this sort of arrangement here, okay? Now I used some stuff that I had lying around. This looks really wild because these are only one millimeter thick. Other than the odd exhaust that I weld now and then, welding really thin metal is hard even with a MIG welder. And because these were so thin, I've had to gusset them. You know, I've had to brace them. Um, but if you buy those uh, brackets like I've described, you won't have to fiddle around. But I've just done this because this is what I had lying around and I'm a cheap ass. Okay, but if you get 75 millimeter by 75 millimeter by two millimeter, 90 degree brackets, we'll make them work and they'll work well in this application. Small packet of 35 millimeter wood screws for our traction loss bracket placement, plus 50 millimeter wood screws for the block. We're talking about this setup here. Okay, this is how I've set up my uh, bracket for my um, traction loss pentometer. I needed to have good clearance, so I needed to have a long bracket because when my um, when my shaft bracket swings, it's got to it's got to it's got to have good clearance for our traction loss. Okay, and you'll be copying this, so this is what you're going to need. Now, this is just made from all bits and pieces of scrap metal that I had lying around, but you will need to find. Uh, 35 millimeter by 50 millimeter wide block of timber okay a bit of pine or something like that it covers our 140 millimeter wide merbau decking here it's held in i've got it held in with a couple of roofing screws you don't need roofing screws just get 50 millimeter long wood screws just with a phillips head screw like those guys you'll need 50 millimeters because it's got a it's got to go through that and then into your Merbau to hold that on. Now, this is not all, this doesn't need masses of strength. It's just holding this bracket that our pentometer rolls on. You will need to get a 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter bracket, or if we've got enough spare 75 by 70, you know, 75 by five mil, if we had enough of that left over as well, we could just make a bracket. If you want to make it easy for yourself at your hardware store when you're there buying all this other stuff, Get a 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter by two millimeter bracket, okay? And then we'll work out some scrap to put on at the right distance to line up with our shaft. That length, so if you want to try and pick something up like that, because you, 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 you're not necessarily going to have scrap lying around everywhere that I've been fortunate enough to pilfer from other projects, you need a piece of flat steel. If we don't have enough flat steel left, you'll need to buy something from your hardware store, from their metal section, or from your metal merchant when you're getting your other stuff. 210 millimeters in length would be ideal. And, you know, anywhere from 25 millimeters to 30 millimeters in diameter. Get a piece of flat steel. It can be two millimeters in thickness as well, or three millimeters in thickness. Doesn't need to be five mil like that. That's just what I had lying around. That's what you'll need to get to run our traction loss pentometer. Four M10 by 40 millimeter bolts with nuts and spring washers. As I've spoken about in the previous video, our peripherals from our motors are all connected to hardwood. There's our 90 degree brackets, our eight millimeter thick by 50 millimeter wide bracketing. You will need bolts to go through those brackets, through your timber to hold those brackets on. There's two bolts for each bracket. They are M4, Sorry, they are M10, you need four of them. M10 by 40 millimeters. So it doesn't matter about the thread pitch, just get nuts and spring washers that fit an M10 bolt. Right, so whatever M10 bolt you get, just get the matching nuts and spring washers. And they need to be 40 millimeters long to go through your bracket and that Merbau. Six M10 by 45 millimeter in length, bolt with nut and spring washers for motor mount plate to mid-frame motor bracket. That's this scenario here that we talked about also in the other video. So this is our 75 by five millimeter thick flat steel that we are going to build into a plate that we weld on to our connecting 65 by 35 box. And you need 
three, 45 millimeter long by MTAM thickness. Once again, doesn't matter about the thread pitch, just get a matching nut that goes on whatever MTAM pitch you find. Okay, you'll need three of those in total. And that's what holds our, our uh, motor mount Merbau bracket on. You don't need to worry about the bolts with these motors. These motors come with those mounting bolts. So you don't have to worry about those, but you will need to buy six. I've got, I've ended up with snazzy Allen key hex head ones, but you can just, uh, this, one's, um, this one's just a standard bolt. Once again, it's what I had lying around. But get, don't get smaller than M10 in diameter. M10, 45 millimeters in length, bolts with a matching nut and spring washer. You're gonna need one M10 in size, 50 millimeter bolt and nut and spring washer for your caster pivot. This is our swivel caster pivot point for our mid frames for our traction loss. And that is a 50 millimeter long bolt, nut and washer. It needs to be 50 millimeters wide to come through your material, to come through your box and have enough to get a decent amount of thread on your nut. So once again, just get a matching nut and we'll talk about the tech screws that we put into this uh, on both sides as well when we get into our build. It's not a necessity, but I would recommend some thread locker, even some Loctite thread glue, even just medium strength. When we're flying around Norschleifer, we don't want our sim flying apart. It doesn't hurt to put some of that on some of our bolts and our nuts. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sorry that this is all really sort of technical stuff and it's a little bit on the boring side, but without it, you're not gonna know what you're gonna to need to get this build done. Um, if I've missed anything, I'm gonna pick it up when I'm doing this video edit and I'll uh, have it as captions in the video, okay? And you can ask me any questions you need and we will answer them and we will get this job done together because we are machines, we are powerhouses. Thank you so much for subscribing. Really enjoying helping you guys out and I'd appreciate it if you helped me out and subscribe. So we'll see you in the next video where we're gonna talk about what are the tools we need to achieve this three degree of freedom motion platform build. Rock on guys.